Okay, so here's tomorrow's trip. Um, you've got a, the edge of a cliff running along here. You've got some forested area. You've got a sort of a lake here, a marshy area. And uh, leading from the marshy area is a little stream. Runs up against the contour lines and it disappears. There it is right there. There's your stream up close. My geography degree coming in in terms of interpreting the landscape. I don't know if the geography degree helped. Maybe some of the mapping the military. Not sure. But there it goes. That may be a running off to the side there. That may well be a, a joint or something. I'm not sure. We won't know until we actually get on the land. flowing into this area, it's not being drained as fast. See it's come right up the banks here, another five or six feet deeper. Here it sinks right in this little area here. Jeff feels it sinks out there. Oh well, someone will tell. This is a lot of water to be coming out of this uh, tunnel system. So I've been speaking to Edith, who's the lady who owns the property, and uh, she's basically saying that six, between six and eight hours from the time it rains heavily, and this starts running a lot. In other words, more than this. Um, and the upstream, there's, there's actually a shaft, a significantly sized shaft that a human being would not want to fall down. So I cannot wait until the water level goes down upstream to check this out. A lot of water, all that underground. I first thought it's probably something like a bedding plane, but so it's coming out of the rubble. I don't know what it is. Exactly, whether it's some big bedding plane that just seeps through, but many, many little spots where all the streams come together. Flow out there. She told a story of uh, this lady, Miss Edith, who owns, uh, who owns the property. Um, there were some people building, I think they were building the bridge, and uh, they left their tools there. And they were just above the high water mark. I, I guess it had rained heavily, and the, and the flood pulse came. 